Hey guys, so I'm going to do a little video about a big tank here and we're going to be talking about the H cylinders for medical gas. As you can see, this is, you know, a green tank, so we're primarily talking about oxygen here right now, but the, you know, skill set required to hook a regulator up and reduce that pressure from high down to standard working at 50 psi is very very similar. So, I'll be honest, this is not a skill that we commonly get tasked with anymore. All right, we're fortunate enough in most modern facilities to have piped in uh, 50 PSI or standard working pressure, medical oxygen and medical air in most parts all throughout the hospital. Chances are if you're having to hook up anything to do with a 50 PSI source uh, that's not coming from the wall and you're having to get a big H cylinder or anything like that for oxygen, something maybe really bad happened and you're having to use this tank to back feed a uh, part of the hospital that maybe got hit with a disaster or you had a gas leak and you're having to isolate things and backfeed the system to provide 50 PSI to uh, a particular area of the hospital. The most common incidents in, in my experience is for hooking these up, not that you know wouldn't um, be well versed with being able to do that in an emergency type situation. We're using these for heliox tanks, so a brown and green tank. So you have somebody with some sort of airway obstruction, whether that's asthma, a uh, really, really bad croup, something along those lines, and where you're trying to um, you know, give a lower density gas. Skills are still all transferable, same idea as far as hookup and everything, but just kind of making that point that you're not always going to be going and rolling a big H cylinder or anything like that and getting it to uh, a particular area of clinical. So, kind of show you here, I have two H cylinders on a tank trolley. We're not going to roll cylinders, and actually I don't make you do an H cylinder checkup, but I want you to practice them with it in case this does come up. Uh, these things are extremely heavy. Uh, you know, excess of 2,000 PSI on a full tank inside of this thing and you don't want to have one of these drop on you or drop and fall and cause some sort of a problem or anything like that. And they're difficult to pick back up. You got to be very cautious when you're moving these things. Usually the only place we're moving them, I take this little tank trolley, which you can't really see well, but uh, it's a little metal car with some chains on there. You'd be taking this down to the bowels of the hospital or wherever your dock is for loading up and where they store these big bulk cylinders. And you need to be able to take a tank, roll it onto your cart, secure it, and then from your cart, take it up to wherever you might be utilizing it for patient care. Um, hopefully that distance you're rolling a tank isn't too far, but you never know, you might encounter some weird stuff. So main thing is making sure your cylinder cap is covering the cylinder head, um, or if you wanna call it the valve, whatever your uh, term you prefer, totally fine, kinda interchangeable. If you're gonna do this, I got this chain unchained off my tank cart here, and all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my strong hand on the tank shoulder, Okay, right up top, and I'm gonna put my, my non-dominant hand up here on the cylinder cap or cylinder head. And all you're gonna do, you're gonna try and keep it within the frame of your body. You're gonna kind of put it on its edge. You can see I'm kind of tilting it towards my body just a little bit in slow control motions. My, this is not the greatest tank card. It's got a little bit of a big drop, a lot more like a flat little dolly kind of card. So this one makes a little bit more noise than others. No need to worry. So if I was gonna move this, I could roll this in and you can kind of pivot and adjust things to get it back on. So I, these would be chained up against the wall or somewhere like that. They're never gonna be just left unsecured. You take my tank, get my full tanks, get my tank cart already. I'm gonna get it up here. And I'm gonna kind of roll this in place. You wanna be careful not to let that thing lean back too far or don't let it get too far out of your frame or your shoulders, otherwise that thing could fall. Once I get it rolled in place, take a chain on my cart and lock it in, that way it's a little bit more stable here, okay? So these things are pretty friggin' old, um, and we'll get into tank markings a little bit. We're looking for generally the uh, most recent tank markings, but if you look at some of these tanks, I've had ones here from 1970s and things like that, all right? So because of that, they can be a little squeaky when you're taking these caps off, so all we're doing, if you're looking down at it, we're turning this thing counterclockwise to remove, and you would only do this once you're at your location and ready to use some gas here. All right, um, what we are going to do, and we'll talk about tank markings here before I get too far along. I'm gonna show you how to hook up a regulator on this thing here in a moment. So if you look on the tank shoulder, there's gonna be a series of markings, okay? There's all this other stuff you're gonna learn about on the lecture side of things that talks about, you know, the tank size, you know, the uh, tank type, the standard service pressure and everything. We're talking about we want to see these extra markings right here generally and this isn't something we do but your board exams that hit on it most of our modern tanks these days they do put a little bit of paint on the most recent test date so you're not having to go down and hopefully everything goes into sequential order but you'll see on older tanks they're all over the place so you can see i get a little bit of a yellow paint right here 
I can see that this tank was last tested in 2013. I have a plus, and that plus right next to that number signifies that I can exceed that 2015 standard service pressure by 10%, and usually that gets us up to our full tank capacity around 2200 PSI. I have a star next to it, so every tank is only good for five years, and it doesn't mean we refill it after five years or get rid of it. It means that they won't refill it until this thing is repassed the hydrostatic testing to make sure that this thing doesn't um, you know, have any problems or excessive expansion under extra pressure. So if you got a star, it means you're good for 10 years, which we do, and then you usually have like a tester's initials or something like that. So this tank was tested, let's see, in June of 2013, and we have a star. So as long as uh, we get this thing refilled before June of 2023, we're good. At June 2023, after that, if I send it back, they're going to have to retest this tank. All right, so this thing uses the American Standard Safety System, meaning it's threaded. Uh, easy way to remember that is big ass tank, all right? And you'll remember that safety system. It's the spacing of threads, the direction of threads, and you can see that it's a threaded connection unlike the uh, pin system that we utilize with the E-cylinders. So the first thing we would do if we're hooking up any sort of you know, pressure reducing valve or regulator or anything like that is crack the cylinder and clear any debris out of there, okay? People scoff at this, but if you have any sort of debris in there and you're putting it under through with a lot of velocity through metal, you could, you could have weird things happen and electrostatic discharge and problems could take place. While oxygen is not flammable, it greatly supports combustion and we don't want anything like that happening on our watch. If you were doing this in a room, I will tell you most of the time like running Heliox, I'm doing, I've done it with kids. I don't like to crack a cylinder in a kid's room, so I'll try and do this out in the hallway, put the cap back on, and then roll it in the room and make my hookup or whatever. But you wouldn't want to transport with that cap off, okay? But it, it does make a loud noise. You want to alert people there's going to be a loud noise. I don't say cracking the tank. Everybody would go, what? And then they'd be scared and go, hey, it's going to be a loud noise here. And we're just trying to clear debris. You're not trying to point it at anybody or anything or hold your hand by it. All we're going to do is open up. So with this, just like the cylinder cap, we're going to do a counterclockwise turn, and you're just going to release some of that pressure and it'll shoot any debris out of there. All right, and then we're good. Now we're ready to hook something up here. Now with these particular tanks, you are going to need a uh, wrench, all right? And that can be a fixed crescent wrench, can be an adjustable one. A lot of times on these tank carts, we'll have just an, a, you know, a straight up fixed crescent wrench that's appropriate size so you don't have to worry about any adjustments or anything. Adjustable crescent wrenches work too, but it involves you kind of turning these dials to be able to adjust down and get on the proper uh, nut sizes threading this thing on. What I have right here is a custom built regulator typically, or it's called a regulator because we have the ability to reduce pressure from high down to standard 50 PSI working pressure, which happens right here. And I also permanently have something affixed to be able to deliver flow. So this one's unique in the sense that I, this by itself would just be a reducing valve because it's dropping the pressure down. It's a single stage. So it's going from 2200 to 50 in one step, which most of our common ones do. Everything that comes out right here is you know, pure oxygen, but it's at 50 PSI. I have a built-in auxiliary pressure port here, so I could hook up anything that requires pneumatic 50 PSI working pressure. All right, so ventilators, uh, IPV, something like that. But it's got a little nubbin right there for quick access, meaning if I'm not using it, it's not going to spread gas out. So I could open this tank without this thing being hooked up, and it's not going to spray. It'll only spray whenever I thread a disconnector on, and it pushes into that. And then right to the back of this, I have your Thorpe tube. Nobody calls that a flow meter. Okay, 50 PSI is provided to the back of this, and we're opening a needle valve and allowing that 50 PSI to escape in a compensated, and, you know, back pressure compensated in a measured manner. And we'll talk about those a little bit more here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to get this, and I'm going to try and turn this thing so you can see it a little bit better as I'm threading this thing on, maybe. I'm going to try, hold this up. I'm going to try and hold it nice and level. If you get something like this, you're never going to get it to thread. I'm going to try and hold this flow meter in an upright position. And then, just like everything else, the oxygen tanks, they actually thread by turning you know, to the right or clockwise to tighten. I'm going to just simply finger tighten this. And once it's finger tightened, okay, that's pretty good, but it's generally not going to be enough to prevent some 200 PSI coming out right here of escaping. So you're going to take your crescent wrench, whether it's a fix or you got an adjustable wrench, and all you're going to do is get on this thing. I try and hold the, the regulator, or the, in this case I'm placing my hand actually on the reducing valve. I'm going to try and hold it upright, and then that way I'm only moving this nut right here rather than tilting the entire thing. That flow meter will work a little bit if it's a little cockeyed, but you, you really want it in the upright as possible position. 
So I didn't have to go crazy on that or anything, all right? What we want to do is check our work here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to watch this pressure gauge, and I'm going to slowly turn this cylinder valve to the left. You can see it pressurized, okay? And I'm looking and listening for leaks. If I hear a leak, don't freak. Turn it back to the right. Close it with these. Really, it's just a matter of typically tightening everything. Make sure you're not cross or anything like that. So no leaks there. So I'm going to go ahead. At this point, once I have pressure, especially if I'm utilizing the 50 PSI, I need to follow the book's recommendations. Open this thing all the way up. And then do like a three-quarter turn to a full turn back to close. And it's really important with these because uh, if you leave that thing full open, you can get valve freeze. So meaning that, that that valve gets stuck in the open position. You shouldn't be transporting it uh, with something like this on because it's very, very vulnerable if it falls. So you're kind of in a bad situation. It's going to be really difficult to remove this thing, okay? Because you can't turn the tank off and then the pressure shooting out and everything and it's a big mess. All right, so you want to try and avoid that. So making sure that if you open it up all the way, go ahead and at least do a three-quarter to one uh, you know, full revolution around to prevent that thing from getting valve freeze. At this point, I could go ahead. I could have low flow oxygen or you know, even a high flow like a Venturi or something like that, something that requires liters per minute, not PSI. I could open this little needle valve. And I could set liter flow. And I could hook this up to oxygen tube and a cannula or whatever. And the way we read this, and we'll do this a little bit more in class, there's a little silver ball right there. And we are trying to look at what line intersects the very center of that ball. Not what line hits the top, not line hits the bottom. The line that hits the center of that ball, that is how we read this thing. These are also back pressure compensated, which it means in the presence of back pressure, the number that we're seeing here is always accurate. So even if we're running a, a device with a ton of back pressure and you had your flow meter set at 8 and it's only saying 6, it's not that they're getting eight, it's showing really what is going through that, okay? Because we're not setting flow, we're opening up a valve and allowing metered amounts of 50 PSI coming out. So that liter flow going to the patient is gonna change as back pressure changes. And, and that's why this thing is great. It doesn't work so well for transport because it's always gotta be in an upright position and everything. And that's why we don't really use flow, to flow meters or Thorpe tube or whatever you wanna call it outside of the specific area in which we are providing you know, patient care. As mentioned, if I needed to hook up a ventilator or something like that, I could have a, I have this 50 PSI auxiliary port. As I threaded high pressure, you know, O2 tubing with that disconnector on there, it'd push on this piece, and you'll hear that 50 PSI kind of come out. All right, let's say I'm all done and I want to dismantle this tank. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to close the cylinder by turning this to the right or clockwise if I was looking down on it. All right, it's closed. I still have pressure here. Why is that? Well, because there's still 50 PSI trapped inside of this. There's still pressure. It's still got the tank pressure right here. I haven't evacuated anything. So all I need to do is flush this or bleed the system. You can crank the flow meter. I just stick my finger in this 50 PSI port. Drops down very, very quickly. If it's not dropping down and, and you're really evacuating gas, it means you have not closed the cylinder all the way. So we're closed. I need to go ahead and get this regulator off of here. So all I'm gonna do do the opposite, kind of hold this in place, be very, very careful, and just kind of break the connection with the wrench, and then you should be able to finger loosen this. All right. At this point, if I was all done, I'm gonna go ahead and put the cylinder cap back on. I could leave these tanks on standby or if we were fully done and I had no concerns about needing them, I could take them back to their storage area, take them down to the docks, roll them back off my cart again, and then put them in their respective storage areas. So uh, we'll focus more on tank duration calculations and things like that so a little bit later on. It is important to recognize that even though this has got the same full PSI as an E-cylinder, it takes a whole lot more liters of gas to make a PSI in this. Our tank factor is pi, you know, 3.14 liters to make a PSI where it's much smaller on that e-cylinder, you know, 0.28 liters of gas to make a PSI. So this tank very, you know, full is, has thousands of liters of gas, and it's important to kind of keep that in mind if you kind of mess up on a decimal point during uh, tank duration calculations. So I hope that helps. We'll play with these a little bit more in lab. It's just a little video of how to kind of play with these things.